hello here's a quick video on how to think or how to how to approach uh, building a cycle problem using the dw sim uh, tool so i have the dw sim launcher here um my interface might look a little bit different i think this is what they call the cross-platform user interface if you're on windows it might look a little bit different i'm on linux since i get this but all the functionalities are the same so i'm going you see i have some examples here i'm going to complete a, uh, uh, create a completely new uh, cycle here and i'm going to do the basic ranking cycle so i'm going to click on create new and i should get a new window opening let me try this again there we go and i get here i'm going to put this window to the background and i get what is called whoops i get two of them so i get what is called the simulation wizard there you go so i have the simulation setup wizard which is going to help me choose fluids we're going to do a simple rank a simple ranking cycle using water so here i'm going to click next and I have this uh, search box with all the compounds that I could use. I'm gonna go down, I could enter in the search here to find something. I'm just gonna scroll down here and I'm going to select water. I'm gonna go here, click on next. And now I have to select. So I have basically this, um, this particular step of the process is asking me to select uh, the equation of state. What I'm going to do, so I can, uh, I guess the, the software can select the equation of state for me, depending on um, exactly um, exactly what is going on sort of physically in the, in the different processes. But I'm an engineer, I sort of know what I'm doing. So I'm gonna come here and I say, I want to select use a specific property package. So that's saying I want to select an equation of state model myself. So here's the property, the list of property packages. You don't know all of them, uh, but that's okay. Uh, you can Google them. So Peng Robinson is an actual, uh, so Streichik uh, uh, Vera, these are uh, equations of state that are semi-analytical. Uh, this is the original Peng Robinson. I'm just going to scroll down. So normally I would select CoolProp, which is a numerical package that uses uh, a suite of, um, or a set of uh, um, equations of state. Uh, however, as of, uh, or, or around the, the versions 8.04, there's a slight bug uh, in using the cool prop package. So for water, I'm just going to come here to this team tables. So this bug is going to be fixed in the upcoming release. So if you have a version after 8.04, most likely this is not a problem, um, but I'm going to get the same results if I use the steam tables. So I'm just going to click steam tables. I'm going to click next. And there it says my simulation 53, ask me to select a system of units. I'm going to click SI and general and i'm going to click finish this is just a selected number of digits and so on i click finish and now i have this blank this is the flow sheet this is where i'm going to put the different devices that are uh, in the uh that are in the uh, cycle um so now uh, in building this i want to so i want to I guess remind myself that dw sim sort of solves from as if this as if the system was open so it's going to try to solve from beginning to end as if this was an open system. It's going to look for an open bit and then run through and solve every um, sort of every object in sequence. Uh, but ours is a closed system. We're going to have to come back. So we're going to have to do something uh, a little bit um, uh, a little bit specific to tell DW Sim that fluid actually loops back in onto itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to consider my ranking cycle, which has four components, right? It has a pump. It has, after the pump, there's a heater uh, that will bring the fluid to a gas phase. Then there's a turbine, which is where I'm going to extract work. And then there's a condenser that returns to a saturated liquid. Okay. So I'm going to start with the pump. I don't know. I always like to start with the pump myself. So I'm going to come here to pressure changers and I'm going to select my pump element. I'm going to put it right here. So I have the pump, it has an inlet, it has an outlet, and it has work or power coming in in order to uh, make it operate. Uh, then so now I'm going to think of my cycle as sequential. So I'm going to pick here, this is labeled two. these are random numbers, I can change these. But two is the inlet of the pump is what they call the material stream. This is fluid entering the pump. I'm going to pick this as my beginning. So this is my first stage, I'm going to build my cycle completely sequentially. So the pump, 
then feeds into, let's see, I'm going to need exchangers. I'm going to need a heater. I'm going to pick the heater. I'm going to bring it here. Oh, and it auto-connected the inlet of the heater, uh, of the, sorry, the outlet of the pump to the inlet of the heater. I'm just going to make it sort of straight. I'm going to bring the outlet here like this. And you'll notice if you keep getting error messages, um, you'll notice I have this little button here which is a little running man that says enable disable dynamic mode. So I've unclicked it so that DW Sim doesn't try to solve the cycle every time I make a change. It just waits for me to build the whole thing before, uh, before it makes a change or before it tries to find a solution. Uh, because obviously my cycle isn't complete right now and I've not put in all of the specific values I'm going to use. Uh, so after the heater, I'm gonna put in a turbine, I'm gonna go back to pressure changers. I'm gonna put an expander like this, boom, there's a turbine and it auto-connected the outlet of the heater to the inlet of the turbine, just because of the position where I dragged the turbine. Sorry, the, this interface on Linux, I'm on Linux, this interface is a little bit slow. After the turbine, I'm gonna put another exchanger. I'm gonna put the cooler and drop it here. There we go. And that's essentially, those are the four components. This is my full cycle. I'm actually done, except now this is not a closed cycle yet, right? There's an inlet to the cycle or there's an inlet to the process and there's an outlet to the process. I have to loop back. And so at this point, so I, I was careful to always go from left to right. And now I have to go from sort of a dangling end all the way back to the beginning. So that's, I'm basically uh, in the DW Sim um, words, I'm recycling the fluid. Right, fluid that is exiting this process is actually re-entering the process. I have to tell DW Sim that it's doing that. I'm going to come here to logical blocks. I'm going to get, there's two types of recycle. There's an energy recycle block. So if I was going to take energy and put it back into another device, and there's a standard recycle block, which I'm going to put, I like to put it at the bottom here, and it doesn't auto-connect anything. So I'm going to take the fluid from 14. So I'm going to click on the recycle block. And I'm going to see the inlet instead of being 16. The inlet is going to be 14. It's the outlet of my condenser. Like so. And then I should get this big line sort of crossing everywhere. There we go. And now 16 is completely dangling, right? It's just I'm going to delete it because I'm not actually going to need this. So I'm going to select it and then right click. I'll get a contextual menu. I'm going to come here, delete, confirm object removal. Yes. Then I'm going to connect. I'm going to select the recycle block, which is number 15. And you'll see here the tabs are open for all the objects that I've selected. So 15, the outlet. Instead of 17, I'm going to make it outlet at two. And there you go. But now the lines cross each other. We're going to fix that in a second. OK, so I'm going to come here, select 17, because I'm not going to need this. Right click and delete confirm object removal yes there we go so now my lines cross each other i'm going to select the recycle block and in this interface so here's 15 is selected uh, if i go to the appearance there we go there's an appearance tab this is the appearance of 15 this is a tab of object 15 i'm going to say and i always get it wrong i always have to try them i'm going to go to flip horizontally does this do anything? Yes, there we go. So now it flipped the inlet and the outlet so that my lines stopped crossing each other. Then I can put the recycle block like this. Um, there we go. So now we have a cycle. So now we just have to input some pressure. So a, a standard sort of a standard problem uh, would be, uh, well, now that's another, uh, another uh, aspect to think about so that heaters so there's different, uh, there's different ways to specify uh, how each component is going to be uh, or what, what change each component is going to make. So if I select the heater, for example, connections, I'm going to go to properties. And then I see, so let's see. So now this heater in the name is five. So calculation mode, I can, this is basically telling me what I'm assuming in the numerical calculation. So I could say heat added or removed. So I would be specifying the amount of power going in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I want the outlet temperature because we like to often, or at least in this case, we want to specify the outlet temperature. Um, 
So I'm going to I'm going to specify an outlet temperature of 400 degrees Celsius. Uh, oh, except this is so 400 degrees Celsius is 673.15 Kelvin, and I give it an efficiency of 100 percent. Now we often specify in problems. The outlet of the heater is 400 degrees C and 5 megapascals, for example, example numbers in this case. So 5 megapascals would be uh, the state of the material here at 8. But now if there's no, uh, if there's no pressure drop in between, this is what's specified here, says pressure drop is 0 pascals. So if there's no pressure drop between uh, the inlet and the outlet of the heater, it means that this 5 megapascals is this five megapascals here? Well, the pump, so the pump here must be providing an outlet pressure of five megapascals. And this is how DW Sim sort of thinks. The pressure changes, so the pressure elements, we can specify differences in pressure, either pressure increases, delta P across, uh, or outlet pressure. This is what I'm going to select in this case, calculation mode, outlet pressure. And I'm going to say the outlet pressure is five megapascals. So five, one, two, three, one, two, three, five million pascals. And I want an efficiency of 100%. I'm going to solve the fully ideal cycle like this. So now the outlet pressure is five megapascals and there's no drop in pressure across the heater. Um, so pressure elements, or uh, yeah, pressure changes will specify the pressures in the process, thermal element, like heat exchangers, heaters, condensers, and so on. Or coolers, they're going to specify uh, the thermal properties, so the temperatures, uh, or possibly the vapor fractions. So this is how you sort of have to think. You have to disentangle the states and sort of wonder, well, which element in the process is actually providing uh, is actually providing that property. Um, in this case, I'm going to decide that the condenser is operating at 10 kilopascals. I'm going to select the turbine, and this is element nine, and I'm going to go to properties, and I'm going to set outlet pressure, and I want an outlet pressure of 10 kilopascals. This is 10, one, two, three, 10,000 pascals. Uh, thermodynamic path, it's adiabatic, and I'm going to select the adiabatic efficiency. I'm going to put it at 100%. So if my thermodynamic path is adiabatic, then the adiabatic efficiency is the one that is the efficiency that controls the process. If I were to select a polytropic path, then the polytropic efficiency is the one that I would select. But I want to keep the adiabatic efficiency. This is the one we've seen in class. OK, so now I specified the pressure and the temperature on the high pressure branch. I have specified the pressure on the low temperature branch or the low pressure branch. Now I want to specify the outlet of the condenser. I'm going to say that the condenser comes out at uh, saturated liquid properties. So I'm going to come here to properties and I'm going to say, I'm going to drive this by outlet vapor fraction. Outlet vapor fraction is zero, which is a saturated liquid. And now that should be, um, that should be it. Now, unfortunately, let's try to run it. Oh, it says, please select a property package before solving the flow sheet. This is just a problem. I'm just going to, okay, and we're back. We, I did just a little bit of magic. I think this is just when I opened the software. Uh, I had two instances of the flow sheet and then I ran the setup wizard with the wrong flow sheet. So I didn't have the property package, but you see here, property package steam tables. Um, so this is uh, set up. It should be set up properly now. Um, if you uh, if you avoid that early mistake there that I did, then you won't have this problem. Okay, so let me see if I can run. And oh, I'm seeing blue. Oops, Aaron five. A specific property is not good. Let's just go and check what happens in five. Here I'm getting this error message here. Aaron five, a specific property. I'm driving. Done. I think it's just the 
And we're back once again. So this all stemmed from this initial mistake where I opened two flow sheets. So if you follow the instructions carefully, there won't be any, uh, you won't actually run into this problem. So now I didn't get this error, last run execution time 0.1169 seconds. And I've put in the same, uh, um, the same properties as before, the same states, uh, state properties as before. And now I can interrogate the flow. I see, oh, I see here energy flow zero. This is probably just an update uh, problem. Let's see, temperature zero. Let's just see here, five million Pascals outlet pressure. This should work. Here, we'll just run this a couple of times. See if this number updates, there we go. So 5.04 kilowatts in. We get 2,000, almost 3,000 kilowatts into the heater. We extract about 1,090 kilowatts from the turbine, and we have 1,900 kilowatts extracted from the condenser. And so that's sort of the basic thinking of how to build a uh, how to build a simple or how to build a, a cycle in um, in uh, um, in DWSIM.